Hi, and welcome back to A Strong Recommend, where we talk about a thing and tell you if it's worth it. I'm your host, Battlestar. <laughs> I'm I'm your host, Dalton. I wasn't prepared for that bit. There you go. It would have felt wrong to call myself Captain America. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, exactly. That's why I picked Battlestar. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> just geez. like John Walker is not right for Captain America. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I sent you that TikTok someone made where they're like, after watching this show, oh, all the yeah, Captain yeah. America Disney World actors don't feel like <laughs> Captain America anymore. They're all John Walker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, geez. Uh, okay. So um, we we have to answer the question up front uh, of was this show a strong recommend? Uh I didn't Ooh. I didn't think about it in advance and uh I didn't expect to be caught off guard um cuz I love Marvel stuff and I expect yeah. to just say yes most of the time. Um it it, it is. I'm going to have criticisms throughout this mm -hmm. like there are problems, but a strong recommend for me doesn't mean a perfect 10 out of 10. It's it's still true, a strong true. recommend for me. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely <laughs> recommend this show too. It's it's good. Um, however, I don't know if it's necessarily better than one division, if that makes sense. Sure. So we can start out, uh, spoiler free for a few minutes and then switch into spoilers when we feel like we have to, yeah. to keep elaborating. Uh, so, so are we talking spoilers for both or just Falcon and the Winter Soldier? <laughs> for, I, I don't, I don't think we really need to revisit, uh, WandaVision's plot True. to, uh, point out the differences here but it, it does occur to me watching this that you know we're, we're talking about marvel studios second uh attempt at a tv series here technically first this show was made first and was supposed to come out first um, oh i didn't know that but it, it needed to be edited to remove at least this is the rumor it needed to remove uh, a plot line involving uh, a pandemic or like a virus outbreak of some sort uh, because the show was mostly shot before the pandemic happened. And then okay. they're like, oh, shit, we have to remove this plot line and uh, it, it'll have to wait till we get into spoilers to elaborate where I think it's really visible. But I think it's really visible that something got cut. Uh, so anyway, technically their first attempt, but the second one we're seeing and just I, uh, <clears throat> I can see it now a little bit and a problem now, now that you point that out. Yeah. And a problem that um, jumps out to me with this attempt is I don't think this needed to be a show and not a movie. I really I, I feel like WandaVision justified the format a lot better than this did, but the pacing yeah. for this, I mean, it, technically, if we added together the total runtime, it, it would be too long for a movie. But as for the what was it? Six episodes, seven episodes, whatever it was. Yeah. As for what we got, I didn't think the pacing suited being a TV show. Like when an episode ended, like I did watch this week to week as it went on. I think you waited until it was four episodes in to jump on yeah yeah and then i watched the last two episodes in tandem so so don't get me wrong i was enjoying it and i was watching every episode the day it came out and i was excited for it but when an episode ended i didn't mm. go and speculate on it like with wandavision i didn't yeah there was there wasn't a lot of guesswork or guess room i didn't jump on to reddit to read people's theories about what was going to happen i didn't take part in any meaningful discussion because while it's still good, it just wasn't that kind of show. And I don't know, it's not supposed to be the same thing WandaVision is. So maybe it's not yeah. a fair comparison. But WandaVision being the first show they released created so much excitement around having a reason to talk yeah. about it every week. And this really didn't. This is good because of ind individual scenes and moments and character bits. But the overall story you kind of already knew the important bits you kind of right like from from the end of end game uh 
from Steve Rogers handing Falcon the shield. Yeah. You kind of got the trajectory of the rest of this show. Yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say that uh, we we should probably give the spoiler warning <clears throat> now. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that was an Endgame spoiler. And honestly, if you're watching this show without seeing Endgame, you're kind of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, so <laughs> I, I think, I think we should, uh, probably just place a spoiler warning here. Just, just because like, I know that our conversations are going to go on and we're going to forget. Okay. For the sake of being careful, uh, I feel bad yeah. about only throwing out my negatives before we get into the spoiler discussion, but true, true. But yeah, uh, but it's hard to talk if about you hear the positives. Go back and watch it and <laughs> come back. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. <sighs> well, so firstly, do you... Do you uh, agree that this didn't really need to be a TV show? Hmm. I I like the the direction and how it went. I think it could have been uh, less episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, like if they would have done like, like even if they would have called it like a two part movie. Mm-hmm. And like had each two parts be two hours long, mm-hmm. um, like uh, like the the whole scene of like Zemo breaking out of prison, mm-hmm. it was cool, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but did it drive anywhere? And it was just kind of a really quick action sequence that then like right, I, I for me like. I don't, I don't know. Zemo's an example of a thing I really liked. I, I really liked them bringing mm-hmm. the, him back into the fold and what they did with him. But there's a whole... It's weird to call it a subplot. They considered it to be the main antagonists, but the Flag Smashers, I, I didn't care at all, yeah. ever. They, um... <clears throat> not not to like the actors who were the flag smashers like it's not to their discredit because every scene that, that we're in like they they did perform well and it was just you got a I mean two I, second explanation of who they were yeah well and I I really um I actually really enjoy uh Aaron Kellyman um mm-hmm. the main Carly flags, yeah. yeah uh she was also in, I don't know if you ever saw it, but the the Han Solo movie, she was there too. Um, oh, I didn't see that. And I think she's really good in both of these for what she's given, but mm-hmm. those characters were just never really made interesting enough to me for them to be like the main plot line. Like it, it kind of reeked of stretching out that whole idea because they needed to fill out a TV show without it being interesting enough to do that. I'll give you that. Um, She was the most interesting because she was the most conflicted and her being put into the, uh, the leader Mm -hmm. um, perspective. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could really see the struggles that like she had to make those quick, tough calls at any given time. Mm hmm and uh i will say that her character was interesting and, but the the and, overall flag smasher thing was not and she had like really good interactions with sam where like yeah. he outright says that he's sympathetic to what she wants to do and i i, I thought it was funny when the show was just like one or two episodes in i i saw people online that um there was discussion on like I mostly saw it on TikTok about not necessarily where the show was going or like to be speculative like WandaVision. I saw a lot of discussion mm. early on about um calling the show military propaganda. And I, I don't really think that shows through in the storytelling, but I, I guess there's this thing where anytime a movie or TV show like uses like real life military equipment and uniforms and whatnot Mm. like to get military vehicles they need permission from like the u.s army or whatever branch it comes from and therefore they need some amount of approval over the content being created and so on those grounds that 
criticism was happening. And so between that, people calling it military propaganda because they can technically say that of any movie with U.S. military in it, even if it makes the U.S. military look bad, I think this show made them look really bad. I whatever. Mm. Uh, anyway, not the point. Between that <laughs> and this character having motives that aren't even necessarily evil or wrong, like motives that a lot of people agree with, like this philosophy of basically wanting each nation to uh what was the phrase they kept using one world one people uh, yeah there you go mm. basically wanting to tear down borders and whatever like that's a thing that real people believe in and so yeah. between that and the military propaganda i kept seeing people come out and be like oh look at this other level of propaganda where these people that have these beliefs that i personally agree with are bad guys I saw that discussion and I'm like, did you guys not watch Black Panther where the villain was right, but he did shitty things to achieve it? And then the actual hero learned right. things it's... from the villain and then did things with that newfound knowledge? Like, right. An ideal's not inherently it's, bad um... because they place it on a villain. It, it's it, kind of the same energy as the phrase, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah, it, it's like when a villain has a motive that is simply like, I want to be rich or I want to rule the mm -hmm. world or whatever. Like, sometimes that can be good and fun. And I refer to those as like cartoon villains. But most of the time, that's like, that's not what most movies do. Most of the time, there's something right. more to it. And the evil is supposed to be not in the thing they want to accomplish, but how they want to do it. So in this case, she's being painted as evil for how she wants to do it, not what she wants to do. And I like that we see right. Sam have the mm -hmm. discussion where I don't remember how he words it, but he basically outright says, no, 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 I, I agree. I just don't see how what you're doing is going to get us there. Yeah. Or yeah. if it's a good enough reason to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when she eventually dies, like he holds her like he feels something. He regrets from that, it. that it happened the way it did. Um, And that's supposed to be part of the angle of like not just to make the villain more sympathetic, but it's also uh, supposed to be like an illustration of why he's worthy of being Captain America. Just yeah. him still having that goodness in that moment to be like, no, 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 I really care about this villain where yeah. John Walker really doesn't. John Walker is who I think should have been treated like the main villain, though. And I don't think yeah, we yeah. quite got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I love his character and it's it's in the same energy as uh Carly Morgenthau's character mm -hmm. where um they're not sure how to get where they're going mm -hmm. and they keep making bad calls. Mm -hmm. Um the 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 crazy thing about it is like um there's that iconic scene at the end of episode 4. Mhm. Mm where he beats the one dude to death with the shield. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the most frightening and the most human thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> it, it encaptures like at that point, he wasn't trying to fill the shoes anymore. Mm -hmm. He just wanted what he felt was right. Yeah, it was mm. it was kind of about himself and not about yeah. what he stands for. And so, like, it's what he did is wrong in that, yeah. like, it was a war crime. He was violently murdering someone who, like, not only wasn't actually the one that killed Battlestar, mm -hmm. but, like, someone who had surrendered, who was no longer a threat. But, yeah. uh, like, it's it's not a problem that he murdered like captain america murders and when i say captain america i mm -hmm. guess i mean both sam and steve they 
both do it. Most yeah. MCU superheroes <laughs> kill people. Storyline wise, this was different because this was him it was doing the wrong... war crime and this yeah. was him acting out of emotion and not like mm-hmm. a mission where it was kind of measured and calculated and it like they came yeah. to the conclusion that this was a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Like the big action sequence uh, at the beginning of the first episode where uh, where like Falcon is flying and they're having this midair combat like yeah people definitely mm-hmm. died there oh yeah he killed people but people died for the sake of a mission not because yeah. he was not, too yeah. emotionally overworked to mm-hmm. function reasonably yeah and honestly it's almost like a, a labeling theory in a way because you know everybody knows that he's not captain america including him mm-hmm but everyone knows it more. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, and everyone's like waiting for him to fail. Uh, I, and he eventually just fails. And yeah. can you really blame him? Because Steve Rogers was on a pedestal. And it was mm-hmm. a very up top high pedestal mm-hmm. that there was no way anybody else could climb to. Yeah, I, I view him as a character who isn't evil but he makes the point that like there is something special about these superhero characters that yeah. there is some amount of goodness what do they beyond have that the I normal don't... that it takes to be like them and that like a relatively normal dude can utterly fail in that position like yeah. he's truly not good enough to do it not because he's evil but because he's just kind of too much of a normal dude. And I don't know, maybe that sounds like Mm -hmm. a critique on humanity, but I don't think that's the point. I don't think it's supposed to say, I don't think they're trying to say like, Oh, this is what the average person would do. We're, we're all somewhat evil. I think they're just trying to say Steve Rogers is this good. Now watch Sam live up to his ideals. Right. Right. From from a non-hero perspective, mm-hmm. like Falcon versus like Captain's pedestal, mm-hmm. like it's not much different. But from from John Walker's perspective, it completely is. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like um, you see him throughout the entire show until he gets the serum that he's comparing himself to so many different mm-hmm. people. Yeah, and like like um. Uh, the the Wakandan like assassination squad, mm-hmm. where he gets his ass magically handed to him, mm-hmm. and like he said, they're not even super soldiers; mm-hmm. they're just regular people. Now, w- with that, with that said too, because that particular sequence ties into this, mm-hmm. I'm saying that he's not really an evil guy. He's not really a good guy either. Everything he does until they give him what I feel is an unwarranted uh, like justification sequence redemption arc at the end that this is where I think things got cut. I don't think Mm. we saw his turnaround. He was just an antagonist in one scene and a good guy in the next episode. And I think the cut plot line uh yeah cut out him having a real redemption story somewhere but anyway everything he does is rooted in selfishness and you know that is supposed to get better as the story goes along but also i think he stands in for you know with with the race discussion all over the show i think Mm. his role in the story is that like he never says anything racist like his best mm-hmm. his you, you know the line my best friend is black uh or his wife is black as well like he interacts with black people and doesn't say anything wrong but i think he stands mm-hmm. in for real people that don't think of themselves as racist but then like it like it happens like in in subtle ways like i think he consistently uh he just he manages to disrespect like individual 
black people like on several occasions meaning like okay Battlestar is his best friend I guess but then when he's interacting with his family afterwards like there's no honesty in the discussion he's having with them right they have a genuine pure love for him and they talk about uh Battlestar I for- what's Battlestar's actual name I forget Lamar they talk about Lamar's very genuine affection for him. But then like they, they kind of imply that now he's, he's still kind of thinking about himself in that moment and doesn't really care about the loss that his family is going through or his, his black wife, like she's there, but we never see like real, like affection there. He lets, um, uh, the character with the ridiculous name, the woman from Seinfeld, uh, they'll eventually call her Madame Hydra, whatever the ridiculous mm. name is that she actually Didn't has. Didn't they just tell her to, to call him Val or call her Val or whatever? Yeah, something like that. Um, when yeah. she comes in, she outright like sits between him and his wife, makes some offhanded disrespectful comment to her, right. like along the lines of like, hey, don't interrupt. The important people are talking here. And he has yeah. nothing to say about it. He doesn't care about his wife being disrespected right in front of his face. Right. And then before the scene you were discussing, um, where he gets into that fight after having taken the serum, right after we hear Zemo talking about, oh, well, I I think someone deciding to take this serum, uh, I think it inherently reflects having values of supremacy. Um, that happens he takes it he gets in a fight with all of these black women all of these people that are not uh white men and then responds mm-hmm. with you know while he's there the the one with supremacy the one with the super soldier serum he he says you know they're they're not even super soldiers these are people yeah. that i should just inherently be above i can't believe <laughs> These other people managed to be superior to me in this moment. That was before he took the serum. That fight? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Why'd he make the comment about not even being super soldiers? Because he got his ass kicked by someone who wasn't a super soldier. Yeah, I I thought that happened right after he took it. No, because Zemo gets away, they find him, Mm -hmm. they capture him, Yeah, and then they meet up with Carly, and then he gets the serum. Mm -hmm. That fight happens before he gets the serum. Okay, well, he he still makes that comment, so it's still the same. Yeah, yeah, same implication, but uh, you might be right about the order it happens in. But uh, same idea, and and again, uh, he's not supposed to be outright racist it would have been really easy for them to make him actually say something racist and they choose not to but i think he is Mm. supposed to stand in for like the kind of person that says like all lives matter like they might say that and think they're not saying something disrespectful but you kind of put it together if you think about it a little harder i know a lot of people that like never say anything outright and blatant but then we'll just say something the wrong way like referring to a group of people with like the incorrect term or something like that i I think it's that kind of racism the kind where you know that it's wrong but you also don't realize that you're not holding up your end of (laughs) how how these interactions should work yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I honestly, I took the line in two different ways. Mm-hmm. I could see your aspect of it, mm-hmm. but I could also see it from the aspect of um, him being in a league of its own mm-hmm. and not yeah. realizing it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if what I'm saying sounds like a reach, but I only get there because of them including that Zemo discussion about, well, no, I think you have to inherently believe in supremacy. He doesn't say white supremacy, but he says you have mm-hmm. to believe in supremacy in a show about racism yeah. to take this yeah. no, serum, I, I and can... then he does. So that's where mm-hmm. I'm making that reach, even if it might be one. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, no, and it's it's still valid. Like I I see both both sides for sure. But I was thinking of it in the in the regards that like, um, you know, uh, potential you know, uh, race racist mm-hmm. stuff going on aside. Yeah, I took it in the regards that he thought if he put on the suit that he would be something more, mm-hmm. and he wasn't. Mm-hmm. He didn't and think then, he'd have to earn it. He just thought he was already that good by the very yeah, nature of who he is. Like, the suit is its own badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Like, and that he's like, okay, I made it. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I just have to do what I think is right from here. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, getting Ma- his ass handed to him from the super soldiers. And then the uh, Wakandan assassination squad. I can't yeah. remember their name. The group name. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, he looks to Battlestar. Mm-hmm. And then says they weren't even super soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, I took that as sure. um, they they weren't, you know, the thing that kicked his ass before, mm-hmm. which would have been expected, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, to my knowledge, I was thinking in my head, well, of course they whipped your ass because they are assassins yeah. with vibranium spears. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, and so uh, there's another thing that kind of gives me the small reach of uh there were kind mm. of race implications there too is, is because like uh, there were other more obvious reasons they should win that fight like you just said like how in the world mm. like what led you to believe you were gonna win this fight right what is the fundamental difference between you and them that made you think you were inherently gonna overcome them is it right perhaps right. them being black women and I would think so, because he also made the comment, uh, oh man, I wish I had just rewatched the whole show before we discussed this, but leading (laughs) into that fight, uh, he made some kind of insensitive comment about what their weapons were, like he implied they were primitive in whatever Mm -hmm. phrasing he used in telling them to put their weapons down. I don't remember how he worded it, but... I could see that being like a misogynistic. But it was like a cultural... Mm -hmm. He made, like, a cultural jab at their weapons. Like, they were... Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I could see both of ours, like, where Mm -hmm. I picked up on one side and you picked up on the other. They they kind Mm -hmm. of, like, that meme where it's, like, two dudes giving, like, a handshake to each other Mm -hmm. and, like, finding the common ground (laughs) in the bottom frame. Like, I can see, like, both of our points working in tandem together and and making up the whole story, Um, like, definitely now. Yeah. Now, Um, now mind you, Zemo... mm Mm-hmm. When he discusses, when he makes his supremacy comment, uh, it it's weird. I don't, I don't know if he believes it because on one hand, it is consistent with his character. He does not want mm. superhumans on this planet, including himself. Like it's that makes sense. But also, does he not believe in supremacy? I mean. He's a baron. He dedicated screen time to, like, illustrating how badass his lifestyle is and, yeah, like, just kind of being insulting to people with less extravagant lifestyles. So, like, maybe not <laughs> white supremacy. Like, he's not, like, a Hydra agent. He doesn't work with Nazis. I could see, like, but, financial hierarchy but, being a... a- big stigmatism with him you know what i mean yeah or stigma yeah he doesn't seem to truly believe that people are equals he might oppose white supremacy but he didn't say white supremacy he said supremacy and the show let us relate that to the show's racial themes Mm -hmm. so i Um, I don't know if he believed it but (laughs) can i be honest about zemo's character what's up I was surprised when he started smashing the super serums. Hmm. Like, I would have thought he would have tried to take one for himself because he was part of the original, like, Hydra experiment with Super Soldier. Mm hmm. You'd think that he would want to perfect the formula because he wanted to finish what he started. I, I mean, do you do you recall, like, his motivations in Civil War? I don't know if you've watched Civil War since it was brand new it's been a while um civil war kind of establishes him as somebody who doesn't want superhumans um 
Well, I, I don't know, because on part of his plan is to unleash super soldiers upon the Avengers, but I think those super soldiers kind of already existed, and they were just in incubation, so he was just going to unleash ones that already existed, and he wanted to stop the Avengers because he looks at them as a supremacist group, as people that think they have some authority to rule over other people. Hmm. And so his whole motivation in civil war is wanting to stop that okay um okay is a relatively simplified version of it but yeah that was pretty consistent with his character if if you uh remember that mm -hmm. um now um something that i because captain america is probably like my weakest knowledge in marvel mm -hmm. was isaiah bradley ever mentioned like ever before this point in terms of the mcu yeah uh no no this okay. was the first time he was ever acknowledged okay and uh which the comics also uh like acknowledge him retroactively like steve rogers is the first comic book captain america but then later mm -hmm. on more history is revealed where nah, he's not quite the first here's this isaiah bradley fellow and uh mm. and then was he technically captain america or was he technically the first super soldier that's that's one that i didn't quite get a clarification on uh he he literally wears the suit at least in the comics um okay in the in the show i have the impression that he never did that he was a super soldier yeah um the comment is made that Steve never knew about him, so I would say he never wore a costume that that the public was okay. never aware of him. Um, and, you know, the character outright says, uh, the character outright says, you know, they they won't let there be a black Captain America. And mm -hmm. Steve Rogers in the comic books, uh, you know, it it really i'm relating this to like when a mantle is passed to people uh of different races within comics like mantle passing's a very frequent thing that we're just now starting to see a lot of in the movies mm -hmm. this also happens alongside discussions of the character themselves not just their mantle getting race swapped going into movies and mm -hmm you know a lot of people that well hell the kind of people i was talking about a minute ago where they don't think they're saying something racist but when you really narrow down the motivation behind it that's what comes out uh there will always be conversations about like why are we okay with uh the human torch being turned into a black character uh, but you would never let like the Black Panther be turned into a white character. That's an argument they'll go to is why isn't it even? Mm. Why isn't it fair both ways? And besides the issue of like representation, besides the point of just not taking away acting opportunities from minorities, from a storytelling uh, standpoint, um, these people are always ignoring the context of does that character's story rely on them being a certain race or are they just like the default so the majority of the time for a white character them being white has nothing to do with the story so it doesn't matter if they get changed moving them to the screen like the human mm. torch being white does not matter he's just white by default you can change that right steve rogers was always a character where to me I was like, no, Steve Rogers, not Captain America, but Steve Rogers, he kind of has to be a white guy, right? And adapting this story because, like Isaiah Bradley said, they're not going to let there be a white Captain America. Not in the 40s, where the characters... You mean a black Captain rooted America? Rooted in. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so given that the mantle that the whole identity around him is created as this like propaganda iconography of the forties military, um, both kind of in reality and in the context of the story, like, of course that had to be 
a white guy. And so here's Isaiah Bradley coming out and saying it like, no, he has to be a white yeah. guy. But then the show uh, goes and proves that Sam is worthy and right. just says, you know what? He is going to be Captain America. Deal with it. Some of us have moved on and want a better society that is going to see these people as equal. So he's Captain yeah. America now, if you like it or not. And a lot of people are not liking it. A lot of people proved Isaiah Bradley's point by going on Twitter and TikTok and whatever and saying, no, no, no Sam's not my Captain America. And yeah, yes, he is. The thing, yes, the thing is. that like <laughs> I liked about the switch was the fact that like, it didn't feel like it was a governmental jurisdiction thing. It felt like a moral jurisdiction mm -hmm. where like, it doesn't fucking matter what the government says. Mm -hmm. Like we need someone who is a hero regardless yeah. of color mm -hmm. and I'm going to be that hero whether I like it or yeah. not. Yeah. Because he didn't want to be Captain America. Yeah. So Sam Wilson spends the whole show needing to prove to himself that he's worthy of it. Right. John Walker. Why does, he need, <laughs> John Walker <laughs> why does he need everyone else to approve it? Yeah. John Walker just inherently believed that he was worthy mm -hmm. of it. Failed. Yeah. And then Sam realizes, oh, well, I've. I've done better than that. Not like, like I'm not that guy <laughs> right? <laughs> and gets led to the, the conclusion that he's worthy. Mm -hmm. And I guess with Bucky, it's never even really a, it's never even really a discussion, even though in the comic books, both Falcon and Bucky have at one point or another been Captain America. Um, mm -hmm. In this case, it was not a conflict between the two who would never get it, who would become Captain America. Bucky never really considered the possibility. Maybe, yeah. That it could be him, which uh, is fine because Sam has done more to uh, illustrate that he's worthy of the role. But, you know, if they gave it to mm -hmm. Bucky, a lot of the people going on the Internet now and saying Sam's not my Captain America, they wouldn't have been saying it about Bucky. Yeah. And it, it's it's the race thing. Yeah. And I know like a lot of people have, you know, taken up the shield, mm -hmm. you know, like Frank Castle. Mm -hmm. at least in the comics i don't know if that's still canon or not um there was a point when captain america stepped down and became a different superhero if i remember correctly um oh what name was he going by he was going by nomad and yeah. and technically in the winter soldier if i recall correctly his outfit in the winter soldier that like has no red in it it's just blue and white Mm -hmm. I think it resembles his nomad costume because mm -hmm. he has the, the two shield like things on his arm. And and that's where they're getting like, well, mm -hmm. I, I think more so in like the color scheme and the like altered version of the yeah. chest pattern and stuff. So they never call him nomad in that movie, but it is where he becomes less of a propaganda tool and more of an actual uh, embodiment of America's actual values. Well, at least what we say America stands for. Uh, yeah, and more more of the people's values than the government's values. Yeah, so when he's separating mm. himself from the government and standing more with the people in that movie, he's kind of being the nomad from the comics. Okay. Just like in, uh, was it Endgame that, uh, Hawkeye became Ronan. Yeah, like they never yeah, call and him they never that, explained it. But yeah, but it's what they're doing. Did he anyway ever? Did he ever go it. back from not being Ronan? Like ever? Like I know he goes back to being Hawkeye in the comics, but like, didn't he still use the sword in in Endgame? Like after that? No, I no, I think he gets right back in a Hawkeye outfit, and they never acknowledge the Ronan thing again. But I know we're gonna see more of it in his own show. Yeah, yeah. Um. Um, that they're going to dive backwards anyway, a little bit and show um, more of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, going going back on point here. Um, I had no complaints whatsoever about um, Anthony Mackie or what's his character name? Sam? Uh, Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson. Thank you. Um, I had no complaints whatsoever about it because it feels right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, story wise. Yeah. It like. <sighs> The character himself, the actor himself, mm -hmm. it feels right. Yeah, I I have I have qualms about like 
the villains and about the actual plot, like in terms of like suspense and caring what's going to happen next. Like that stuff's kind of weak compared to WandaVision, but in terms mm. of like making me like these characters and in terms of the actors doing a good job yeah. behind them and in terms of the ethics and morality behind the show, like that stuff is all fantastic. And I don't think Sam Wilson was anybody's favorite character before this show, but mm -hmm. like they made it happen now. Like now that character. Yeah. Granted, while we're calling him Captain America, not the Falcon now, but they made that character a big deal now. Well, it feels wrong to call him Captain Falcon. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, did, so did you also die when, when someone did refer when to him as yelled, that? Who are you, Captain Falcon? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I died because I... immediately I... went, yes! <laughs> like, Show me your moves! <laughs> uh, oh, and then, and then twice, uh, I assume they knew they were making a Key and Peele reference, but twice somebody calls him the Black Falcon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Key and Peele skit. Um... <laughs> But uh, uh, speaking of which, I'm forgetting his name, but Isaiah Bradley's grandson, mm -hmm. who was the one that called him Black Falcon, um, he will eventually uh, be a hero, too. And so this okay. show and other things are kind of building up to uh, like a group of what the comics call Young Avengers. I don't know that the MCU is going to call them that. But you can see this universe kind of planting the seeds of younger replacements for characters so like uh like you have wanda's children and then uh this character who i think is going to be called the patriot and then like hawkeye's show is about him training another hawkeye right um somebody a little older was cast to play uh ant-man's daughter who is a superhero stature uh okay so uh, like there's there's seeds being built up for that and then seeds building up to like the dark avengers which is in like group of villains obviously mm -hmm. um and it, so like it's it's planting seeds for the future but uh like wandavision i think it did a good job at being mostly about itself yeah um so there's that like you you still you're still gonna have a problem if you decide to only watch the movies and skip over the shows because the shows are just as important yeah but yeah, they're they're aiming them up to be but there's been superhero movies that like failed on the grounds of being too much about setting up the next thing and i think marvel's doing a good job right now of like as tempting as it is to make that mistake and keep doing things that are just hints at the next thing. And they're, they're doing a job at like a good job at being patient and just saying, no, this story like stands on its own feet. It's not all just a trailer for the next thing. Right. Right. Um, I, uh, like I said, like I, I was, I would, um, I, I wouldn't put this in like the same vein as like WandaVision but like a continuation of the story whereas WandaVision felt like its own thing me personally um i i guess for bucky cuz like i could feel this being like like a year after endgame you you know where like they all take like their own like little respite mm -hmm. and then you know uh sam decides what to do with the shield in that time mm -hmm. you know like i like it, it feels like a continuation of endgame like in its own like little branches, well, well, but like WandaVi Wanda WandaVision, WandaVision felt like its own closed thing. I don't know. WandaVision has that too, in that it's a direct follow up to losing Vision in Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. I, guess. I mean, they I they guess both that does make sense. They but... both rely pretty he he heavily on the events of previous movies, but I guess a difference mm. is that the Winter Soldier, who we have somehow avoided talking about much at all. Um, mm -hmm. In that there's already been... He's always good. Like, there's like... already been two movies about him. <laughs> right. So so there's a bit of that. Like, I think... I think this movie... Or this movie... I think this show is 
harder to jump into without prior knowledge than WandaVision yeah. is, which might sound off because WandaVision is the more ridiculous out there one, like the less grounded one. It's the one about a witch having children with an android. And so that sounds more ridiculous. But Vision and Wanda have also been minor characters up to this point, whereas Bucky right. has been important. And Sam Wilson was a minor yeah. character, but mm -hmm. he's going to be a fan favorite now because he was given time now. Right. Uh, here's something interesting. I, I seen an interview with Anthony Mackie. It was on Hot Ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you watched his episode. Uh, no. But they talked about uh, Sean Evans from Hot Ones asked him uh, a quote that he talked about was um, Anthony Mackie said something like, uh, side characters are more important than the main characters. And he he elaborated mm -hmm. that main characters are mainly driving the plot forward. Okay. Whereas the side characters build the atmosphere mm -hmm. or something to that extent. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting seeing his perspective change mm -hmm. or if it does or how his like acting is going to, to differ between being Falcon or Captain America. I almost called him Captain Falcon. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, like because of that like sort of um, ideology that Anthony Mackie has. Mm -hmm you know from going from like a side character to a main like yeah. big standing point in the avengers yeah. it'll be interesting to see um i only have one gripe with captain america with and it makes sense okay and it's the costume <laughs> um like i don't mind the color scheme mm -hmm. i don't mind the overall look of it but the only thing that I don't like about his new costume mm -hmm. is the like the neck. Mm -hmm. It makes sense why it's like that. And, and it is. But they could have picked it to be like blue yeah. around the neck instead of white. That's the only thing that I don't like about the costume uh, or about the new Captain America. I think it's fitted awkwardly. Yeah. Um, um I don't have any issues. I with love the, the wings and shield combo. That looks sweet. Yeah, I I really like the costume overall, and it is a very mm. comic book accurate costume that, oh, is that really? translated really well. Um oh, that's cool. But but I feel like I don't uh, I don't know. It was weird. It didn't just feel bulky. It wasn't like they put like a fake chest in there or something like often mm. happens. It was like it was just loose a size too big yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll, I'll give you that um but uh i i am excited yeah. to see more of the new captain america because mm -hmm. like um i liked steve rogers as captain america mm -hmm. but it wasn't realizing what more of captain america could be because mm -hmm. i mean he was just super strong could jump really high and throw a shield mm -hmm. our dude has two little companions that scan for information <laughs> like he's like iron man and captain america yeah in a way and it's it's a really cool idea mm -hmm. speaking of yeah um, I, I love and like this is comic book too but i love that mm -hmm. in taking on the the captain america iconography like he's still also the falcon not in terms of like yeah the character like he hasn't moved on emotionally mm -hmm. but in terms of like he's still using those skills he already had yeah and building them together and i, and I like that mm -hmm. because like an unfortunate thing about superhero storytelling is that no matter how little sense it makes we just have to accept like for instance iron man not just giving everyone iron man suits we just have to accept things like that because we mm. couldn't have a variety of superheroes otherwise. Right. Uh, but in this case, like they let the moment make sense where it's like, okay, I have access to this technology. Uh, I'm still really good at flying and I'm going to keep doing that. And I still already had a drone and I'm still going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing is, is the new suit is from Wakanda. Mm -hmm. His old suit, the u.s government still has mm -hmm. so i'm wondering uh whatever the the one dude is that he like helped him find who the flag smashers were i can't remember who he really is or if he's like an important character comic book he does become the falcon after sam wilson okay that's that's where i was going mm -hmm. i was gonna ask if that if that guy ends up becoming the new falcon mm -hmm. 
Um, I, uh, there's, there's a lot, like, I don't know much about the U S agent. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know much about, um, uh, Emily Van Camp's character, Sharon. Mm-hmm. I know that wasn't it like sort of like rumored that she was supposed to be, um, agent 42 or 24 or whatever the number was who kills Captain America in the comics. She, I, I believe the number is 13 agent 13. Is it 13? Uh, wow. uh yeah, but not <laughs> it's in, a number. Yeah. But not in terms of like, uh, reveal thing like that is who that character is like this is that character from from the comics um mm-hmm. like with the name like sharon carter i think the movies just never actually called her agent 13 okay um, yeah I, I don't i don't know what the number is yeah i just know that she was supposed to be the one in the comics to kill captain america do you think that they they may act on that later on like do you have any theory as to why because i mean if you think about it if it weren't for the new Captain America, she mm-hmm. wouldn't be getting a pardon and mm-hmm. um, being able to come back into the United States, even though she's really going to fuck it up for everyone. It looks like mm-hmm. um, with her, her still evil intentions in that uh, crazy, um, that crazy place. I can't remember yeah, what it's called. I, I mean, the MCU is not really doing anything with that story arc, the death of Steve Rogers, which was the, conclusion of uh civil war in the comics but movie civil war mm. didn't end up resembling comic civil war and then steve rogers and that's didn't, a change i like yeah that yeah that's fine and yeah. then steve rogers didn't really die in the mcu i mean i don't know they, they're being a bit ambiguous and weird about it but it's more like they just let him age out of the role and retire then like he died i guess um mm-hmm. but in the movies, I, I I do think it was weird to make her all of a sudden evil here. Yeah. And pe- like even though there's precedent for like I don't know, I guess in the comics there's mixed morality everywhere. Um, but like she seems to just f- have flipped on a dime and people are speculating that it's really a scroll trying to get into shield but i don't know if that adds up because why wouldn't the scroll just impersonate someone who's already in shield <laughs> what's interesting though if you think about the power broker mm-hmm. and uh carly like it's almost like they didn't recognize each other mm-hmm. like yeah. in the in the final fight so it's possible. I don't really know what the scrawl are and what like story arc they're leading to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, it's it's kind of mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you they, know, well, a little, little strange so there. It, they were introduced in Captain Marvel, which you never saw, and okay, um, in the comics, uh, y- you could say Secret Invasion would be the name of the big story. They could be building up to actually i think they announced a show called secret invasion so i think that's Mm. for certain which might be why people are yeah i'm right so they did they did is an upcoming okay they did announce this because i know like loki's getting his own show there is a lot of yeah mcu tv i know loki's coming in june and secret invasion Um, is one of them which is why probably why people are speculating about her being a skrull but okay but it i i don't really think she's a scroll i think that's just a decent excuse for her being pretty out of character because i don't think they gave us a good basis for her to flip like that just yeah. like i don't think the redemption story for john walker uh works at the end because i don't think he ever had a moment of self-reflection to like accept that he's not behaving like a hero like after his major fuck up in his war his war crime and then his walking away from that war crime without any like damage to his well-being like he loses the mantle but is still allowed to walk free so after he gets no real punishment for what he did wrong there like he rips off the falcon's wings and just screams like a crazy man i am captain america like i don't think he ever learned his lesson we just suddenly saw him i mean that was before he got discharged 
Yeah, but but and so then, um well then he makes his he makes his own shield mm-hmm. and during that fight if you notice he pl- he welded his medal of honor mm-hmm. on the inside of it. Mm-hmm. And like they they took that scene to kind of possibly make him like make it that be his reflective moment like like what are you doing like you're you're acting out of revenge here Maybe. and then he throws his shield away like which I think was like his um sorry mm-hmm. that was a big bug and I thought it was a spider it's a stink <laughs> bug um but uh, he he then throws the shield away which seems like that meant to him. M- you know Mm -hmm. uh this i am great because i am Mm -hmm. and when he threw that shield away it kind of felt like no i do need to earn this Mm -hmm. at least in 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 my uh perspective of seeing that scene Mm -hmm. um so i mean like i'm not saying he's like fully Mm -hmm. you know fully uh uh what's the word i'm looking for redeemed yeah it's not like he's fully redeemed but he's like on the road to recovery Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know about that because the lady he's working with that made him his U.S. agent is Hydra. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if he necessarily knows that yet. I don't think he does. So I mean, I don't, I don't think he understands that he's being manipulated into something evil. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, and I mean, if you think about it, it's it's kind which, of which a, is an another twist. which is another place yeah. where he's illustrating not being good enough to be Captain America because Sam Wilson wouldn't have right. fallen for the shit he's falling for right now. Right. But at the same time, there was that scene of where he's looking at the court and he screams at them that you made me who I am. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting because he's like falling into like the same thing, Mm -hmm. like unwillingly. Yeah. Um, So maybe maybe he's like he's like the the like visual representation of ignorance Mm -hmm. as well, instead of just, you know, possible supremacy. Yeah. Um, I could see that being a thing. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do next. Cause you said at the end of this, they, there was no end credit scene for the final episode. Mm -hmm. Was there? I don't think. I don't think. Um, well, there was one for the, for the second to last episode. I don't remember now. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a a couple of days since we've seen it. Mm -hmm. Um, and on top of that, we had to watch Mortal Kombat like right <laughs> after. To, to, well, at least I did. I had to watch two episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier and then mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat all back to back to make sure I was ready to record and talk about yeah. them. Um, but what's the next show that's coming out? Because I know they announced the the fourth Captain America movie. Loki is next. Loki's next. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple months until then. Mm-hmm. Um, did they did they give any sort of like release date for the new Captain America movie? I it'll be very far away. Okay. I because, because I know, because there's a mil like if you look up like a lineup of what's already coming for the MCU, mm-hmm. uh, like there there might already be like ten other shows and ten other movies before they get there. Okay. Um, granted, they're releasing things super fast, so I don't know. Maybe that does happen in like two years because like this year we're getting yeah. four movies, and next year we're getting I think four movies. Like it's just four. Do movies you know what four movies we're getting? On uh this year it's um black widow uh shang chi uh the eternals and the next spider-man movie okay yeah uh i still need to uh (laughs) don't hate on me for this but i still need to see uh far from home and doctor strange (laughs) before i before i see the the second like doctor strange realmed movie Mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't really think I have much else to talk about. Uh, Marvel's music scores are always good. Their effects are always good. Um, mm-hmm. At this point, like it's it's kind of a standard to mm-hmm. where like it's more about the story and how the actors performed in any Marvel mm-hmm. thing because they're all pretty good. I I should mention that um, I don't know how much of it is just the TV budget because like i don't know these are expensive shows but they are cheaper Mm -hmm. than the movies but uh a lot of the fighting and action didn't do it for me um which is interesting like i loved the show for like character moments like i I loved isaiah bradley's character in particular 
so much. I think we were texting while I was watching it, and I said I I think I might have let a single tear go, and that was because of bringing him into the into the museum at the end. That was a fantastic moment. Bringing him into the Smithsonian um, exhibit was so good. Um, or Captain, uh, I almost called him Captain Falcon again. Yeah. Fuck. Is this <laughs> or or we we repeatedly uh, kept forgetting to talk about Bucky here because really it was Falcon's mm-hmm. show, but like yeah. Everything with their relationship but, together was so good. And um, him him finding closure with the people that he wronged. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of trying to make it better for them. And so all of these personal moments and dialogue, I loved all of this stuff, but a lot of the mm-hmm. action really fell flat for me. Um, yeah. Like one of my favorite moments was the whole repairing the boat mm-hmm. montage or yeah. um, just them kind of like in the in the room with the with the guidance counselor mm-hmm. where they were competing with each other in a staring contest or, <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's the little moments that really made this show uh, like reach out um the but the, 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 the therapist the or end, whoever making them scooch in closer and then they put their yeah, knees between each other locking like, their knees together like that was better than any of the fight sequences <laughs> <laughs> uh not to discredit the you know the choreography of it but like it's it's a nice change to see not just guardians making the jokes mm-hmm. um or like the the fantastically delivered speech at the end mm-hmm. i'm I, you know yeah. talking to the people in power who don't really realize what they're doing to other people's lives which it would have been really easy to make that bit super cheesy but i i think they avoided mm-hmm. crossing the line oh absolutely um they 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 did that really fucking well it's Um, particularly difficult given that he's dressed like an american flag (laughs) like that had to make it really hard to not cross the line and make it overly cheesy but i think (laughs) sorry it's a a stink bug and it moved from one wall Mm -hmm. to the other and it's on my ceiling and i'm just waiting for it to drop right on my damn head yeah and and how fascinating is it that these two characters like uh, sam wilson and I'm wanting to say the Falcon because that's the name of the show, but I'm wanting to say Captain America because that's who he is now. So right. Sam Wilson and Falcon and, and the Captain Soldier and and, <laughs> and and Bucky, they don't have like they're not a pair in the comics. No. Like pairing these two together isn't a thing. It's just that these two actors have such a good chemistry together. They really do. Um. <laughs> I, I saw a clip from like. I don't know, some talk show or something, or maybe it was a panel or something where Kevin Feige was speaking publicly and someone like it might have been an audience member said something like, when are we going to get a Bucky and Falcon like buddy comedy? And you could see his face go. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, um, in summary, like, I don't know, I, I guess my weak points were, like, like I said, a lot of the action didn't work for me, and I don't quite feel like this needed to be a show and not a movie, and I, I'm i not in love with the execution of the villains, but all of the stuff regarding the heroes really did mm-hmm. it for me. I think it's top-tier stuff for Marvel. Um, I think, like, the the racial and political stuff was handled really well absolutely that they Mm -hmm. made sam wilson from a character who was really relatively minor to someone who's going to be a really big deal now not just in terms of like the story of these things but in terms of like public perception like how many Mm -hmm. falcon cosplayers did you see before now and how many captain falcon (laughs) cosplays are you gonna see afterwards (laughs) um you know, not not to make light of it, um, but it almost feels like it's like a racist slip when we call him Captain Falcon. Because <laughs> we're like, Captain Falcon, shit! I've, like, <laughs> I've, I've been calling him that since the comic books did it. Since the comic books made him Captain America. <laughs> okay, oh, I thought you were about to tell me that the comic books have made him Captain Falcon uh, and we've been ignorant oh. this whole time. I was about to be like, damn it! Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, it's funny. I'm interested to see where where Bucky's character is gonna go though, because mm-hmm. like it, it kind of feels like his story's been like consistently wrapping up every time we see him. I don't know what you do with him now, right? 
like is he gonna be is he do you think he's gonna be part of the the new movie that's coming like his redemption's complete at this point but uh right but i don't see you separating him from from captain america i bet he's in black panther too they they did kind of shift him to wakanda um and where he was uh, previously referred to as the white wolf by the wakandans mm-hmm. but he doesn't seem to have really embraced it like it didn't stick but maybe we'll see him like now mm-hmm. that he believes uh that yeah. he's had a redemption and he's a different person like maybe now we'll see him in the next black panther movie embrace that i could i can see that does does he actually go in the comic books by the name white wolf in the comics white wolf is actually a totally different character <laughs> okay um because a very different I, like, minor character i'm not even sure what you call him here because like throughout like until like the end of endgame like is he still technically the winter soldier or is he just bucky <laughs> like you know what i mean hmm. i mean i mean i don't know if it ever really mattered because has he ever been like he's never really been an avenger he's never mm-hmm. really been a registered like government agent like post sokovia accords like superhero right. registration act so i i think people probably like kept calling him the winter soldier out of habit or like he's explained his history as like oh mm-hmm. the, the old japanese man at the end he says something like uh your son was killed by the winter soldier and i was the winter soldier and like they never replaced his name per se but that's because emotionally he still felt like the sins of the winter soldier were on him and so now yeah he's over it and maybe we'll see him embrace the white wolf name that the wakandans Mm -hmm. gave him now was white wolf an avenger or was he just another like comic book story i don't because like I think he's I a don't... really minor, unimportant character. I don't think there's much history to him, which is why okay. they went ahead and reused the name and didn't really care that they were throwing away the opportunity to really use that character. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that that mm-hmm. whole instance was a little tricky to to sort of follow mm-hmm. with him. Um, I I honestly have never really had any complaints about him being the Winter Soldier or um, you know, Bucky. Um. He's always been one of my favorite parts of the MCU. Yeah. And uh yeah, I I don't know what they're going to do with him from this point, but I'm excited to see it. I don't know if I was expecting another Captain America movie. It's it's funny cuz on one hand like mm-hmm. like I said, the precedent of mantle passing is new for movies. So on one hand, I was like, yeah, okay, we're done with Captain America movies. Steve Rogers out and we're done with these. But we also knew that Falcon was going to become Captain America, and somehow it still never occurred to me, oh, of course, there's more Captain America stuff after this show. (laughs) But what and how does it involve Bucky? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Yeah. um, They still haven't really really officially acknowledged or teased another movie that they're going to call the Avengers something or other. They still haven't really done that. Like, the Avengers don't really exist at this moment in the movies. Yeah, yeah. They never actually um, reformed after Civil War. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. I um. Zemo, Zemo <laughs> tore them apart in Civil War, and he is still mm-hmm. around, and the Avengers are still not really reformed. Um, I wow. suspect... I didn't even think about that. I suspect all of these young characters that are in the comic books the young avengers maybe they'll just be, be the, the, the avengers, avengers movie. period yeah like they they might just be the avengers not the young avengers i could see that i could see that. um I unfortunately d- i don't know what they'll do with the prior characters that are still around though because they're not like gonna kill them all off like some of them are gone right. iron man's out steve rogers is out um black widow seems to be out but oh her her movie might establish a different black widow but it wouldn't be a younger one she seems to be the same age um roughly Mm -hmm. little younger whatever doesn't matter um 
but I don't. Is it still Scarlett Johansson playing Black Widow in the movie? I don't. I don't know much about the movie. It's it's a movie that takes place before her death in Infinity War, and there's another character there who that's the lead actress from Midsummer in the comic books. Uh, oh, oh, okay. she's another Black Widow, so she might inherit that role here moving forward, so that there's still a Black Widow around. Yeah. Um, Oh, hell, now that I think about it, we're also getting Natalie Portman as Thor. So the mantle passing isn't all necessarily about giving them to young people, just about giving them to new people in general. So Mm, maybe there's two separate Avengers teams, uh, uh, young Avengers and uh, just Avengers, or maybe it's all one team and they drop the young thing altogether. It's not it's not really clear. Um, Marvel, despite having announced a million shows and movies, is still being pretty sly about where it's going overall yeah yeah uh, i'm interested to yeah. see what what more comes out of the stuff yeah um anyway we've been spec that, I, yeah we've been speculating been... for like 20 minutes because i said yeah. in conclusion like 20 minutes ago so <laughs> in conclusion yeah, there are um, flaws but i think the good stuff greatly outweighs it it's still a strong recommend yeah i still dig it too um if you listen this far without watching the show, uh, that's a bad thing. Go watch it. <laughs> Why would you do that? watch us again? You could have been done with two episodes by now. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, if that's the case, um, you will see this whenever you see this. Check us out um, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're watching this on YouTube and vice versa, if you're listening to this on wherever you listen to podcasts, go check us out on YouTube. Uh, the bells and all that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Take it easy.